Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode in our engineering leadership series. Today I have Karina Gary here, who is the director of engineering at SalesLoft. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having <laughs> me here. Yes, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. Um, SalesLoft is, uh, or at least all of my friends have said, SalesLoft is like such an amazing company to work for. So, I I think that's true. Uh, I'm yeah. still there. So I've been there for eight years, which is a very long time. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> eight years. That is some commitment, you know. Um, I love that. And so, um, so you started off as a, an engineer there or? Oh, I started off as the first QA team hire. Um, wow. Yeah. I built the QA team. I built the QA department. I was running engineering teams and I have finally landed as of two years ago as a director of engineering. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. That is so cool. Thanks. That's amazing. And you've lasted through how big is sales loft now? Uh, just about 800 or so people. Oh my gosh. That is larger than I thought. It's very big. But like going from like, I mean, first Q QA, I mean, how big were you when you started? The whole company was about 70 people. Okay. And then the engineering department, engineering and product together, I think was like 12. 12 yes. Months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, to have to go through like that much change into like, I mean, not a lot of people can do that. Right. Cause I mean, you've seen so many different phases. I feel like, right. I feel like it's like 10 different steps of needing to like grow within the organization to get to where you are. And yes. Yes. And, <laughs> like sales left years, like one sales left year is at least three real years. Right. Yes, and so yes. like every maybe two years, it's, it's actually just a new company, right? Like <laughs> it's we're, totally we're true. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, that's amazing. So, um, tell me a little bit about like your role now, like where do you kind of sit and what do you do? <clears throat> oh, thanks. That's a good question. So, um, as far as our hierarchy goes, mm -hmm. so we have a chief product officer, we have a senior VP of engineering, and then that's who I report into. So then we have six directors of engineering. Um, and then each director has a couple, maybe two to five managers, and each manager has, you know, somewhere between four and 10 engineers. Nice. Awesome. Um, so like, what am I doing there? <laughs> uh, I work together with a product leader and we are in charge of our workflow surface area. So we call it the workflow pod. Um, and it's one of the, the main pieces of functionality at SalesLoft. It's the, it's like, I call it the bread and butter, but it's the, you have prospects and you put them into this repeatable cadence of, of sale, selling motion. And then eventually out pops a meeting or a deal and money, and then you close your sales and, and you have a prosperous life. Um, but so my responsibilities are obviously people management um, and then making sure we are addressing all sorts of technology uh, backlogs, technology roadmap. Um, and then, of course, just also making sure we're operating efficiently uh, and getting everything done that we need to get done. Cool. And having been at sales law for like ever. <laughs> I feel like you probably have a really good um, pulse on like the culture and everything, the, the sales off way, I would suppose, I would say. Yes. Uh, we, um, I, I, I like to think so at least. So we have something called core values um, and that's like culture is just like this nebulous word, right? But what we start to say is culture is really the embodiment of our core values. Um, and so our core values are, uh, I'll just list them out. <laughs> um, so team over self, uh, which basically means you're working on behalf of the team, right? You're not out for your own personal fulfillment and engagement. You're, it's not about your ego. It's about the team achieving success. Um, another one is glass half full, which is when problems arise, uh, you don't dwell on the negatives and you start to figure out what the solutions are. Um, and so you kind of take a positive path forward when things get tough. Uh, there's also customer first, which is just generally the customers are kind of the most important piece of this puzzle because they're buying our product. And so we need to do things that serve our customers. Uh, and then the last two is they're kind of like two ends of productivity. So 
the first one is bias towards action. Uh, we want to have people that uh, solve problems. So if you see a problem, go solve the problem, right? Don't wait around for someone to tell you to solve the problem, just go solve it. And then the last one is focused on results, which is like, we finish, like we deliver, we finish, we, we have results. Um, and then once we have results, you know, we achieve great things as a company. So those are our core values. And that kind of like embodies the type of people that succeed at, at sales loft and, you know, what our culture is, if you had to like distill it into words. That's amazing. So now today we're talking about the hiring process because it's something like you're really passionate about, which is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Um, why don't we start talking about that? Like, what's your overall, well, like, well, I guess your overall philosophy and then I guess also sales loss overall philosophy on hiring. Yeah. Um, so if you back it all the way back to what are we doing at a software company is like we're writing code and we're making software. We don't have products, we don't have warehouses. We literally, the only thing we have are the people that work with us and their brains. Uh, so like knowledge workers, right? So I think people are the most important thing that make up a company. And so stemming from that, hiring the right people is now the most important thing you can do to make your company successful. Okay. so. If you hire the wrong person, you spend a lot of time dealing with that. Uh, you spend a lot of time coaching. You spend a lot of like emotional energy, like invested in these people, trying to make them better. Or you spend time trying to coach them out or on a performance improvement plan. And it's like, like hours, right? Hours every week if you have the wrong person. Days and days and days. <laughs> hours, days, days. <laughs> like it gets resolved eventually, but um, all that can be prevented, hopefully, by having a better hiring like regimen and a better hiring bar that you're trying to meet. So I, I, I am kind of ruthless uh, when it comes to hiring. And if it's not like a hell yes, it's a no. Um, and that's, that's tough, right? We might be missing out on good people. Um, but we're not hiring the wrong people. And so I, I kind of try to instill that in everyone that I'm, I'm helping learn our hiring process. Uh, so that's what it's top of mind for me right now is just we hire, we're, we're building out a Poland office and we hired a new director of engineering in Poland. Um, so I'm getting to walk him through both my, my theory and sales uh, philosophy toward hiring. Um, and so it's been, it's been fun to like, you know, really solidify how I feel about it and how important it is with him. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I know you're really passionate about like making sure there's no bias during the process as well. Like how do you, uh, what are some of the things you do to. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a lot of it is figuring out how to ask yourself questions real time. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to somebody and they, they tell you something and you're like, well, that's terrible. Right. And then like really quickly running a filter through your head. It's like, why is that terrible? Like, mm. am I judging them for something that is not what they're saying? Right. Like, am I, am I giving them a, fa a an unfair advantage or an unfair disadvantage for some situation that, you know, they may or may not have had the chance to be in. Yeah. That's one thing. There's also like, I, you know, I push pretty hard on like, how can we look at resumes without looking at, you know, the name or yeah. the education or the year they graduated, right? Like all of a sudden I was yeah. like, oh, this, this guy's old, you know, like, no, like yeah. don't do that. Like stop doing that. Um, so really just kind of being aware of the different biases that are out there and what you might pick up on. Uh, or not pick up on. Uh, in, that's in Poland. Do they do the pictures on the resumes? The the pictures, the birth dates. I haven't seen that yet, though. I have okay. like, that. I've run across that. I was like, why did you do that? Yeah. Well, all, all the international ones, which is funny because you know, giving advice internationally is like, look, do they actually care about the U.S. lens or not? Right. But it's like, uh, you know, you, you look at the international resumes and. They'll tell you their age, how many kids they have, right. if they're single, um, the picture, yeah. you know, and everything. And you're like, well, 
Okay. Am I being biased as an American to tell you not to do that? <laughs> or like, is that just the culture? I don't know. Right. But it, it's, yeah. it's hard to be unbiased when it's just like, right yeah, now. you don't want to be like, okay, you have two kids or you have six kids and now I need yeah. to give you this job. I'm like, no, like, like, let's erase that from my memory here and, yeah. you know, focus on if they're yeah. ready for this job. My biggest one when I started uh, hiring internationally was um, all the folks in Africa would send me these messages and they would say, Hey ma. And I'm like, <laughs> what kind of crap is this? But like, I think it's more of a, it's like a formal thing. Huh. It's like they're trying to be polite, but you know, for us, you're like so offended, you know, like initially I was just so, I've gotten used to it now, but um, yeah. that's it. Yeah. The, <laughs> English as a second language is also a really interesting, like, what allowances do you give and what allowances don't you give? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was really hard. I have, I definitely have less patience for errors for native English speakers. Yeah. Um, like errors in your resume or errors in like a writing assignment or something. I just like, you didn't try, like <sighs> you didn't try hard enough, right? You didn't have somebody proofread this for you. Yeah. Um, but then internationally, it's like, of course, like, you know, especially with engineers, like, you know, syntax is important and like spelling the variable name is important, but like, how often are they going to be communicating in paragraph form to somebody? Like, yeah, eh, it's not that important <laughs> after all. Well, what does y'all's um, hiring process look like? Like, what do you, what do you feel like the right way to go about hiring us? Um, well, it's pretty extensive. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I'll tell you this and you'll be like, that is extreme. And I will just tell you again, hiring the wrong person is not good. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> we have recruiters do screens for us. Uh, they source and they screen. And then we pick up at the hiring manager phone screen. So a 30 minute hiring manager phone screen, um, just to like, you gotta like weed out the, the C players and the D players, right? Uh, after that, there's a technical skills interview, like highly important, uh, you gotta have skills, um, then a peer interview. So like, how are you going to work with the team that we have in place? And we have the team interview them. Then there is a resume interview, which is, it's also called a top grade interview. It's literally the history of the candidate, you know, starting in high school, college, whatever professional start they had um, all the way through talking about each job they had all the way through up until now and like what they did, what they're proud of, what was hard and why did they leave? Right. And then, um, after that, you know, you could have like an executive, uh, final interview or not just as a double check. Um, and then of course a reference check, which is, uh, often ignored, but really valuable. Um, yeah, I always find the reference tracks. It's like, you know, like six months down the line, we're like, oh, well, this person X, Y, and Z. I was like, yeah, well, that's exactly what the reference track said. So <laughs> we should be right. surprised here. <laughs> right. Or, you know, every once in a while, somebody will slip by and, and you're like, it, everything seems great. And then you get the reference call and you're like, this, like, this doesn't match up at all. And you're oh. like, oh my gosh, like, a psychopath here, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and in each one of those, like, how do you, I guess, like, how do you make sure you're getting the right thing? Like, what does, what, what does proceeding to the next step look like? Yeah, well, so we have something else that, that it's sales loft kind of, but it's definitely Karina wide, is mm -hmm. that everyone has to say yes. Okay. Um, if someone says no and they didn't pass whatever portion you have of like answer. soft yeses or it's like yeah, hard yes. yes. I hate soft yeses. Okay. So it's like, you, it has to be like an enthusiastic. Yes. We have, so our, our rating scale is, um, strong. No, I don't know. Mm -hmm. like, like something terrible happened. Yeah. No. Yes. Or strong. Yes. Okay. So we have that like soft. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strong yes is a hell yes. Yes. Right? Okay. And okay. Like, again, they've got to be a hell yes from my from me. Okay. So they have to be a hell yes for me. It can't just be a yes. If somebody's reporting to me, I require a hell yes. 
Okay. I love that. Ruthless. Yes. Well, especially since you're, you know, in your position, right? You're hiring, you're hiring leadership. Right. So right. I'm hiring. Yes. Yeah. I hire managers and then I hire, um, architects and yeah. those are like crucial positions that right. you can't get those wrong. Yeah. In the technical interview, what does that look like? Um, so this is good. This is something we've iterated on quite a bit. Um, and speaking of anti-bias, we've tried to figure this out. So for any of our positions, we have like a, an offline exercise or like a homework, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so it used to be like an extreme coding assignment and I'm talking extreme, like build connect for like two um, weeks. Yeah. Like something that's going to take somebody hours and like, there's lots of reasons people don't have hours, uh, mm -hmm. like family structure, their own job, a second job, like all sorts of reasons. So we're like, okay, that's too much. Um, it got us some great results, especially because everyone who didn't want to do it because it took so long, just like left the process. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So we really only got people that were dedicated, but it was still, it was crazy. Um, so we've changed it now. It's, uh, to a code review. Um, so you're looking at someone's code and you do a code review and it's, you know, like an hour or less or how much, what time you want to spend on it. But there's, um, what code are they submitting though? Just like anything? No, 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 not their code. Like we have oh. a, a standard, like a standard kind of okay code. And oh, they like, are, what would you do differently or something? Like right. That. Oh, or how like do you that. give advice to this? Denver, I think is the pretend name. How do you give advice to Denver so they can make a better PR so they can, you know, not miss something or, you know, so like, there's a couple things built in that are just like easy, right? Yeah. Like you did that loop wrong. Okay. Yeah. But then there's like theoretical things of like, is this the right way to test this? Mm. Or is this the structure you should be using? You know? So there's, we've got a whole scoring rubric again, trying to keep our stuff consistent across mm. everything. Um, <laughs> so it's yeah. like, did, did they get this? Did they get that? And it's right. like, okay, out of like the 10 or like the 20 things they could have said in this code review, they only got three of them or they only got 15 of them or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's not quite as, as like checklisty like that, but some of it is right. Mm. And then it's sort of like, what was their tone of voice as they told Denver what Denver needed to improve, hmm. right? Like sending or helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a summary section at the bottom. It's just like how, like, okay, what's Denver's next step here? Like, and so you, you kind of really get to know someone's personality as well as their skills. Yeah. Um, and that's, so <laughs> that's the first half of the technical interview, right? Uh -huh. So when they come in, in person, right, it's all virtual, but part of the, the actual skills interview is looking at this code review and challenging, like what were the comments they made as the reviewer and they have to back that up and explain like why they made those comments. And then um, potentially we have people bring in a sample of their code if they have it, like if they're, yeah. if it's not behind some sort of confidentiality, whatever. And if they don't have it, that's, that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll just dig deeper onto the peer review or ask like a, a question that doesn't require preparation. Mm. but we wanted to make sure people were comfortable mm -hmm. and, and not like, like, we don't want to ask like an, a, a difficult algorithm question, right? That's yeah. so we're not trying to catch anybody. We want people comfortable talking about code. They understand. Yes. I love that. That's what we do too, but we, we do do the take home and we do. Um, and then, you know, and then follow, we do the take home, we grade them. This is actually before any, any interview at all. It's like a written interview, then a code exercise. And then if you pass that or we grade you at some level, then we'll talk to you. Yeah, we, we've switched that order around depending on the, the hiring environment. Yeah. Like oh, if we're, yeah. we're struggling to get people in, we'll talk to them first and then ask them. Like we got to yeah. get people excited about working yes. for us, right? Yeah. Um, it makes sense. That makes sense. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I have to take a break and say thank you to our sponsors. Um, this thought, my company gets to sponsor, uh, these fun things. I always say, I love it because they let me entertain myself with 
talking about things and engineering leadership is one of my favorite things to talk about. I feel like I'm going to be doing this for the next like seven years. <laughs> That's how I structure my life. What do I want to do for the next seven years? Um, but um, if you don't know about this dot, we are a development consultancy. Uh, we get to work with a lot of really fun companies like Stripe, Zero, Wikimedia, DocuSign, Twilio, et cetera, et cetera. We work with a lot of startups too, um, but we really like solving problems. So uh, especially, well, all engineering problems, I suppose, we like solving. <laughs> so if it's like bridging a gap between business and technology or modernizing legacy systems, um, helping with like roadmaps and things like that. Uh, you can check us out at this dot dot co. That's T H I S D O T dot co. Um, back to our interview with you, Karina. So after the technical interview, then is the peer peer interview. Yes, and I think I skipped one when I told you this. Oh, you said a core values interview. Yes, um, right. So those are kind of similar. Um, we can talk about them together. Usually they're different. They're different 30 minute segments. Um, but the whole point is figuring out. OK, so hold on. Let me review. The hiring mm -hmm. manager phone screen is to make sure we're looking at like A players or B players, like good, mm -hmm. good people. Mm -hmm. The technical interviews make sure they've got the skills, like the, the baseline that we need for whatever position it is. Um, and so then we get to the peer interview and the core values interview. And that's really like how are we going to work with this person, right? So how do we, how are they gonna be as a teammate? Um, and how are they gonna handle difficult situations? And so that's the like, you know, tell me about a time, you, you know, something went wrong, what did you do? Or tell me about your favorite team, what made them your favorite team? Or then like the flip side is like, tell me about a team you were on that was, dysfunctional, what do they need to improve? And so those kind of questions are super interesting because you'll get somebody who's just like, oh, all my teams, have, my teams have been great. And you're like, that's not, that's not what I want you to say. Um, <laughs> oh, that's actually really, I've never thought about that. Like, what was your favorite team and what was your least favorite team? Yeah. Mm. So we really like to ask like negative questions mm -hmm. because obviously like things happen in every job and not everything is perfect. And so you've had this experience, but like, how do we see your lens on that experience? Right. Mm -hmm. And so somebody's like, Oh man. Okay. Like you want me to tell the truth? I was like, yeah, I'd love it. If you told the truth <laughs> and they're like, man, I worked on this team and like, it was a, you know, mess. Oh, yeah. That, PG. Uh, and, and like, the manager didn't know what they were doing and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he's just listening to somebody rant in a huge negative way. And you're like, okay, well, that also was not the right answer. <laughs> so, but so you just really want to see somebody that like understands and acknowledges the bad stuff, mm -hmm. but then has empathy. So like, okay, that manager didn't know what they were doing. Okay. But I know that they were new and it was a really rough time for them, right? So now mm -hmm. they're showing empathy. And so that's mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, I think what the team needed right then was, and they provide a solution, right? Like they needed someone with more knowledge about Ruby or something, right? And so like mm -hmm. those are the core values of like um, glass half full and team over self is and just like the empathy, like, okay, I could work with somebody like this. Like they know it's not always perfect, but they're not going to make it worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are, those are like, I have some other sample questions, but, um, I those love those. I want to, I definitely want to, uh, I think the most important thing is like, what are you looking for in that? Right. And I love that you can bring it back to the core values of saying like, okay, glass half full, this empathy providing solutions, right? Like those types of things yeah. I think are like very, uh, you know, because then how do you standardize it, right? It's like you right. can't standardize it unless you have like some baseline, which your baseline is your core values. Right. Um, another good one is for focused on results. It's like, tell me uh, like the hardest you've ever worked on something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like the good answers are like passionate and 
it's like they're super excited to tell you about this time that they worked three weeks on something and like finally got it done and it was awesome and it like changed the customer's life or whatever. Um, the, the bad answers are like, oh God, this was awful, right? And I had to work 50 hours a week. And, you know, like we're certainly not looking for people who are going to like mess up their, their work life integration right Right. like we also want somebody who understands how important it is to get something done right right and they want to we want people excited yeah like the exciting parts of a job are when it's like really hard and then you achieve that goal at the end yeah 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 (laughs) all right i'm just gonna be right back i'm just gonna go re-interview everybody in my company (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's hard. <laughs> um, okay. And then, uh, so that's peer interview. Peer and core values. I kind of mushed those together. Core values. Okay. And then the resume interview. Yes. So that's so kind that's- of crazy. Cause you were like talking about like going back to high school. Yeah. Yeah. You go, so you go that far. You just want to figure out this person's like track record of success uh-huh. or track record of good decision-making. Um, so there's a couple things that we do this interview for and, uh, okay, let me back up. So how do you start an interview and you're like, tell me about high school. Okay. Or tell me about college. We used to start it with like, tell me about college and then realize that that's a very biased question because there are great people out here that didn't go to college. So Mm -hmm. it's more like, tell me about yourself in high school or in your, you know, early twenties. Right. Or like what, tell me about yourself. What did you do? What were your hobbies? you know, five minutes or less. And you start to understand like what they were interested in or where they found their passion, right? Okay, so then you move on to the first job and you're like, well, how did you find this job? Okay, what were you hired to do? And, you know, what was your biggest accomplishment at this job? Same question as Mm -hmm. before, with a focus on results. And then like, what were some high points and low points? And then why did you leave? So we ask those exact same questions for every single job somebody has had. Um, It gets tough if somebody's had like a different job every year. Uh, It's only supposed to be an hour long interview. But what you're looking for is like, especially with why did they leave? Yeah. Like good answers are growth or my friend started this place and pulled me over or like, you know, or sometimes like, oh, my life changed and I had to move to take care of my parents. And so that's what happened. And I left and I, I got another job. But you don't want the people who are like, well, I needed a break or like I got fired. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. tell me what happened. Right. Yeah. Um, I tend uh, for better or worse, I tend to build a lot of trust during an interview. So I've had people tell me like I sued my company. So I had to leave. I was like, well. Okay. Bye. I have to talk to you and pretend like we're going to still have this conversation. <laughs> that seems like a problem. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you want people like, you don't really want somebody who's had a different job every year, but like there's reasons and sometimes that's fine. Um, but you want people who have made an impact and are proud of that impact. Yeah. And like, it's not just like, oh, I finished this one project. It's like, I did this thing that resulted in awesome impact across the organization or for customers or for, you know. Well, what if they were able to do that? Like you listen and you're like, wow, you made such a big difference in one year. And then I got bored and left. Like, yeah. So that's, it's not. High performers are sometimes like that, right? Sure. But you also want to find out why, like, why didn't they ask for more work or what was holding them back from contributing more? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, there's good answers to that. Mm. And there's not good answers to that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, And if, if they got bored and left once, that's fine. But like, if they've had six jobs and it's the same reason for all of them, that's not fine. Cause why am I going to invest months in training you and ramping you up and you're going to get bored and leave? Yeah. 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 Oh, this is such an aspiring conversation. I feel like I'm like, oh, well, I got to change my hiring process. Um, no, this was so much fun to chat with you about hiring in general. I think you have a lot of really great ideas. You gave me some really great ideas. So 
And I'm going to go ahead and implement. And like I said, I'm going to go like re-interview everybody in the org. <laughs> Well, good luck if you if that doesn't work out because I'm not sure your next step. <laughs> Where can we find you? Like, um, are you on LinkedIn or Twitter? Yes. Or something like that? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn as Karina uh, so okay. that's pretty easy. Uh, I'm on Twitter as Shanilator, which is my roller derby alter ego, but okay. I don't actually tweet anything, so um, I might not see it. Like Shania Twain. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, cool. Except cool. like dangerous and causing destruction. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, thank you so much, Karina. We really enjoyed chatting with you. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you next time. I had a great time. <laughs>